Do you have items in your craft stash that are neglected and unused, but you can't bear to get rid of them? Welcome to Use It or Lose It, a weekly YouTube series where I'll dive into the products that you have lying around in your craft room and the products I have lying around in mine. After I've created something, I'll decide if I think I'll use it again or if it needs to give up that precious space in my stash, and I hope you'll play along. Hey guys, it's Jen, and I am here to show you the stash kit that I put together earlier today on Facebook Live. You might be seeing this the next day. I don't know if I'll get this up tonight or the next. But one of my favorite ways to use up stuff in my stash is to put it into a kit and work from the kit because then I'm going to those supplies first and then I don't forget about those things that are in my stash that might be sitting there for a while. And my favorite thing to do is mix some old stuff with some new stuff. So if you watched my... Uh, stash Kits Old Meets New YouTube series. That's where this is kind of coming from, but I'm bringing this into this new series, uh, Use It or Lose It, because after I'm done with this, whatever I don't use uh, is going away. Unless, you know, there's a bunch of something, or I don't know, I really love it. So there are a few things in here, though, that I've had in my stash for quite a while, and I just, I really don't need them. So let me show you what's going on here. Now, if you caught the Facebook Live, this is the the less rambly version of me putting this kit together. I already have the kit pulled together so I can just tell you guys uh, kind of what I did and where I started from. So I bought some old papers from my local scrapbook store. They had some older stuff that I was reminiscing over and some of it I still loved. So I bought some stuff and um, that are several years old, so maybe you guys have some of this in your stash. If not, that's cool too. But I would encourage you to put together a stash kit, whether it looks like mine or whether it's something from your own, um, so we can work through the kits together. I'm going to be working with this kit throughout the month and uh, maybe longer, and I'll share layouts, or some of them might be process videos. I haven't quite decided how that's going to work out, but um, you know, I, I will make sure that you see all the layouts that I make. So. Uh, if you're not in the Facebook group, there's a link in the video description. Go check us out if you are on Facebook, and if not, that's okay too. Alright, so this is where I started, from this basic gray kissing booth sticker sheet. And what I absolutely love on here is the birds. I love these. I feel like these are still very fresh, very modern. Uh, some of this stuff is a little bit dated for me, like maybe this piece here. Um, I definitely could still use the flowers. Some of this stuff is a little bit too much for me, but... I'm going to try to use it. So this is an interesting kit for me because I kind of went a little bit vintagey and a little bit distressed, which is different from my normal style. So I think that's a good way to use a stash kit is to um, like push yourself out of your comfort zone and use up what you what you have in your stash. So here is that. And then from there, I added a paper that kind of made, made sense to add to me that is also from Basic Gray, and it's a little bit different, and it brings in some more colors. So I want to bring in the colors of the birds, which are yellow, aqua, blue, kind of this pink color, and then a purpley pink. And this brings in all of those, um, plus a little bit of orange, which there's some orange in these flowers. So I loved the way that this was going to work with this. And I think by pairing these things with a lot of white, it's I can make it look fresh. So um, that's where I started, and then, I always mention when I'm putting together a stash kit how I like to have a variety of patterns and sizes of patterns. So this is a nice large bold pattern that I'll probably cut up. Um, this pattern is also a nice big bold pattern that I will probably just use pieces of. The back of it will work really great because it's a neutral. Um, this one has stripes on the back which I likely won't use but maybe. Um, but as I'm just, I, I was looking through my stash, looking at these older papers that I had just bought, which these are a part of, uh, this popped out to me because I really love the way that it pulls in some of the orange tones of this flower. Um, and I like the idea of adding in that kind of reddish orange along with the pink. It's just kind of a different color scheme. So right now this is looking maybe a little bit crazy, um, but this wood grain also pulls in the orangey color. Uh, next, I pulled in this polka dot. This is an old sassafras paper. This is a green dot, um, and it's kind of an aqua green, so I like the way that it brought everything together. The other side would work, too, with the colors. It's a little busy when you see this all together, but I could use it if I wanted to. So, But I usually pull papers for one side, uh, 
and so it's fine with me if only one side works. All right, so then I was looking through my stash at still at my old papers, and this sassafras one came up, and it's just fitting the feel of this. I like that it brings in the yellow more and a little bit more of the pink. The other side works perfectly, too, because one of the things that I've really been wanting to do is put more purple, that purple pink, in, and there's definitely some of that going on here. So I love both sides of this. Um... Then I pulled out this paper, which basically did this for a while, where they did these papers that were just distressed, and they didn't really have a ton going on besides that. So this is a perfect background paper, and I love that it has the pink and kind of the yellow here. So I, I thought this uh, made a really nice addition to this um, little lineup here. And then, still looking through the older papers that I had recently gotten, this cloud paper jumped out at me. It's the same blue color as this. I love the way that the clouds have like a text print inside of them, so it looks a little bit distressed. Uh, the back side is perfect. It's just like a simple, um, it's like a barely blue line. It's hard to tell. It's like a security envelope, and the camera doesn't want to focus on it either. Um, but love that. Um, let's see if there's any other older ones that I pulled. I think at this point I was going through my stash. Um, so I found this paper from Heidi Swap's new Hawthorne collection, and I love the way that it brings the orange to the purple pinks here. Uh, and I thought that was a really nice addition, and it would also make a great background. So I pulled that in. Now this is a very different color scheme than what I've been used to work with lately, so I'm excited about it. Um, Next, I found this purpley pink color, and I love the way that it looks with this flower in particular, and I love that it brings in that kind of middle tone. It's this, but it's lighter, uh, so I really like that, and it brings in a stripe. So you can see here now we've got some solid papers, some text, which I always like, some bigger patterns, stripes and dots are always good, and numbers, um, and then this is like a smaller icon, so that's, that's all good. Um, Okay, then I pulled in some papers that are newer that I really love. And actually, this one I pulled in later, and I ended up putting it over here. Sometimes I put them in the order that they look best to me, like laying down. But I really like the pop of black this brings to it. This is from the new Maggie Holmes Flourish collection, and the back has these butterflies, which I think work really, really well with this too. And this isn't normally my style, but um, I really love the way both sides of this look with this and I think it's important to bring in pops of a neutral and I like that black that pop of black the other neutral I brought in from the Maggie Holmes Flourish collection is this one and this is a nice floral print that I could cut up the other side is yellow which works perfectly because there's yellow in the kit and so I could use both sides of this and I really really love that paper so I'm excited about that so now you can see we've got this range of colors there's a few papers that have multiple colors in them, which is important because that's what helps to bring things together is when you can have a, a couple of items with multiple colors. So I, that's why I usually start from a pattern paper or from a sticker sheet or something that I can pull the colors from. So then I decided I wanted another, um, another pattern, I guess. I love me some florals. So I've got a few here. This is one of my favorite patterns and I love that it brings in the orange and the pink and the teal and there's some yellow. Uh, the back side of this is a perfect uh, neutral to bring in as well so I decided to throw this in even though it's a little different maybe than what I would normally throw in but we're throwing, throwing it all out the window this time. Uh, the next paper I brought in was this one from Sassafras. I really liked this as a background and it's just very simple and um, I felt like I needed some more of this kind of whitish color. The back is just a gray dot so that would work with anything of course um, but I really love this one. So my desk is a little too <laughs> crowded for me to spread these out properly but uh, hopefully you can see those there. Maybe we'll do two rows here so I can see them a little bit better. All right, and then this is a paper I got recently and I hate this side of it. This is not my cup of tea at all. 
although it does match. But this side works really well with it. Um, it works especially well with that basic gray paper. And this is the side that I bought the paper for. And it kind of matches these other birds that I have going on in the sticker sheet. So I decided to bring this in. And it's going to be just very interesting and fun for me to use this kit. It's so different than what I've been working with lately. And as I was putting this together, I kept saying how excited I was to work with it. So I think that's a good sign. Um, the last thing I brought in was this paper from Echo Park from Everyday Memories. This is a just from last year, I think. It's not too old, but it's just like a cork background. And I have an idea that I want to do with this paper specifically. So I'm bringing that in. Um, the other side has a bunch of numbers, which could totally work for anything. But I like how this brings in that orangey and wood grain tone as well. So I, I decided to add this into my little lineup here. So that's kind of a different and interesting color scheme um, that I started off with. A different color palette than what I'm used to, but I really actually really like it. I really actually really. Um, okay, then I brought in some plain papers and I decided to bring in three and I went with a like a a buttery creamy color here uh, kind of a greeny aqua and then a really light pink and then I reserve the right to add in white cardstock wherever I want and I'll probably add it in a lot and then I wanted to bring in a couple of specialty papers which I also like to do so there's this paper from pretty little studios dream big collection and it just says never stop smiling follow your heart all sorts of like little words um, I love text and so I wanted to bring in some more text and then I'm bringing in this piece of I think this might be from close to my heart but I can't remember it might be my mind's eye but there's just this piece of uh, gold polka dot that I can use up of vellum as well the next thing I like to do is to bring in alphabet stickers and so I brought in a few that I want to get used up and some that are new that I want to use as well so I brought in these because I thought that they felt uh, a little bit distressed and I liked that about them and I liked bringing in a bold black color and then I also brought in these wood alphabets from Felicity Jane because um, I love these they feel very good with the stuff that I've got going on in the kit and it'd be nice if I could use those on some layouts I don't have very many left so I'll have to be clever but that's the whole point of this using it up so um, to supplement that, I also am putting in these Alexis Puffy stickers. I love these. They're very white, so I think it will help me brighten and freshen things up a little bit. Uh, and so that will work out well. So that will be, I like the idea of including some like kind of scripty words with the, um, like the bolder text. So I like that. And then I'm bringing these in to use them up. I like the pop of the bright teal. And we'll see, I've had these for a long time, they're from 2012, so we'll see if I can get those used up. And then lastly for alphabets, so this is more than I usually do. I usually do one set of thickers and then one smaller set of stickers, but since these don't have very many in them, I decided to just bring in extras. And then I'm going to use these as well because, again, I like the idea of a script with a like a standard um, sans serif font. So um, I have two of these. This is a font that I designed for freckled font and so um, I'm just putting both of them in so that I can use all the letters that I need to. Alright, so we have those. Next, I'm going to actually move these off to the side and I'm going to stick the embellishments on here so you can see how things kind of look together. Right now it looks a little mishmashy but you'll see how I bring things together when I start creating. So the first thing I brought in was these freckled font chipboard stickers and it was specifically because of the purple and this peach will work well with the orangey colors I've got going on as well so um, I'm excited about those and then I found these stickers from Pretty Little Studio that are butterflies and they're a lot like the backside of that Maggie Holmes paper so they have the feel this kind of brings in that vintagey feel so my goal is to bring in the vintage and the distressed stuff and freshen it up so I'm bringing in some fresh and bright things like these chipboard stickers and these puffy stickers along with some more distressed looking stuff like these thickers and these butterflies and I'll show you how you know as I go through and create things with this kit how I'll make these work together. Um, the other thing I pulled these were just something that I wanted to get used up they had a little bit of purple on them and orange and yellow so that's all in in here and I've used these in a previous kit actually so if I don't use them up during this kit they're gone I'm, I'm gonna get rid of them because I've had them sitting around for so long so um, those are gonna get used up or they're gonna get 
thrown out or given to my daughter or something. Next I brought in these little houses and this is another thing that's a little bit more fresh and bright and not super um, vintagey or anything like that but I love these puffy houses. They are from Freckled Fawn and they match the colors in this kit gorgeously so we'll see if I can get some of these used up. Um, I These are a new item so I would like to throw in a few things that I just got that I'm excited about and so these um, matte enamel dots are from Photoplay and I decided to add these in because they have that purpley pink color and then all of these other colors are in in my kit as well so I'm excited about those. Something that I wanted to use up I just have three little pieces from this Maggie Holmes rubber set uh, that I want to use up and they match this kit pretty well so I'm going to go ahead and throw those in there. Um, this was a random camera that I had and I'm going to throw it in as well. So like try to think about like one-off random things that you can throw in your kits um, just so that you remember to use them. And then I'm also, this is something that has been requested for a use it or lose it episode is, uh, what are these called? Eyelets. And I have an idea that I want to do with them and it includes this corkboard paper. So I threw the eyelets in here because I threw the corkboard paper in here. So those are going to be used up. Um, I have so many washi tapes that I had to include some and I just searched through my little washi booklet. Let me just show you really quick. I have a little booklet where I've just kind of swatched things out in colors and so I switched through and I was trying to figure out like what color I needed to bring in here in the embellishment. There's not a ton of yellow in the papers, maybe in a couple of them, and there's not a ton of yellow in the embellishment so I decided yellow would be a good place to bring in some washi tape and this is a super old washi tape. This is from Amy Tangerine's very first collection, I think. And so this will be good to get used up. There's not a ton on the roll, and um, I need to get that used. So that was a good one to throw in here. The other thing I did was um, I had just a partial package of die cut shapes from Kaiser Craft that have these kind of purpley colors in them as well. So I thought those would be nice to add in. They've got the blue too, um, so I think that these will work nicely. Again, these are a little bit more of that distressed kind of feeling because they've got the watercolor stuff going on. So I think if you're using distressed things, watercolor is a way to bring the fresh and bright in with the distressed and old because it kind of brings the two together really. I feel like it does anyway. So I have those. And then I brought in three pieces of flare, and I just brought in some that kind of match the colors of the kit. I don't even know if I'll use these, but I just decided to throw them in so they're in my face and so I can think about them. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was bring in some mixed media stuff, and so I wanted to make sure I get... I have so many different products that I don't have a chance to use very much, and so... Um, I just got this Distress Oxide and it matches perfectly with this kit. It's a little bit brighter than this when you use it, so I'm excited about that. And then I decided to bring in a yellow Distress Oxide as well. And then I thought, what else can I bring in? I thought about a stencil or a, a die of some sort. I decided to bring in these mat or these um, screens that I got from Studio Calico. So some of them are just little shapes. And then some of them are these words that I think Wilna Furstenberg did. And so to go with that, um, you need paint for that. So I put in this uh, heavy body turquoise paint from Dina Wakely. And so there I've got my yellow, my purple, and my um, turquoise. So I've got some colors to work with there. And then I just pulled in one stamp set, which is one from Allie Edwards that I love and I've had forever but never used. And so this is kind of everyday life kind of phrases, so it should work with some stuff. And um, yeah, that is my kit. So you can see I've got a, a variety of different things. I'm loving the colors here. This is very different for me, so I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, Again, this is my stash kit, so I have I reserve the right at any time to add things that I think I might need, like enamel dots or um, spray mist or anything like that. But the idea here is is to get everything in one kit, so that when you come to this kit, you're looking at those items first, those items that you know that you have that you want to use. So. I definitely encourage you to put together a stash kit of your own. I would love it if you wanted to snap a picture and share it with us in our Facebook group so that we can all be inspired. If you put together something similar to mine, a similar color scheme, that would be also fun. We can work together. 
Um, and I will try to do some Facebook Lives, maybe one Facebook Live of a, of a layout coming together for this. But I will also do some process videos and some layout shares. So I hope that you have enjoyed. I hope that you're inspired to make a kit of your own from your stash. Use some stuff that's been in there for a while or that you just got and you don't want it to sit there for a while. Um, and mix those together. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment in the description below and we will see you so again very you soon. take up the challenge? Join us on Facebook in the Crafty Use It or Lose It group and tag your photos on social media, hashtag Crafty Use It or Lose It. Can't wait to see what you create. So what do you have to use or lose? Leave a comment and you may see it in an upcoming episode. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future Use It or Lose It videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.